couldn't be any better if I say so myself. Now, we are in game. It is the first game of a best of three. It's a Z versus Z. Let me introduce these two players. So, up in the top left position, we have got the pink Zerg player from my insanity. It is Dana. And his opponent down in the bottom right. It is the red Zerg from Team Evil Geniuses. Jadong. Woo! Now, this is going to be an awesome series. I can just tell it now. Jadong may try and end this out pretty quick, though. Um, we've seen it from a lot of players that, especially in ZVZ, sometimes you want to end them quickly. You don't want to go into the risk of things going longer. So things like uh, quick speedling all in is on the cards. Alternatively, could just try and go into the baning zergling phase, win on good micro. Or maybe we'll get into the later stages where exciting things can be happening. But of course, since we've had a bit of downtime, I'm going to request a favor from all of you lovely people in the stream. Send out a tweet. Just send out a tweet saying you should come and check out App Models SC2 casting on the At Game Social TV stream because Jadong versus Dana is going on. And that would be awesome if you could all do that. And it would definitely make me very happy. And you want to make me happy, don't you? Because hopefully seeing these games is making you all happy. It's making me happy. So generally, lots of smiles all around. But currently, as Sam's opening, Jadon, not going to be going for early aggression. He's just like, I'm going to go hatch first because I'm feeling brave. I'm feeling like I can win this. So that is what I'm going to do. Straight away checking that down. Getting the gas straight after as well. Hatch gas pull. Super economic focus. Just doesn't really care. Doesn't care about getting down that spawning pool, being safe or any of those silly things. That is not for an evil genius. An evil genius is all about getting down the best mid game possible. Dana, getting down pool, then into hatch. So a bit more of a straightforward, normal opening. Um, the hatchery came down quite a bit later, so going to allow the potential for getting down a couple of extra drones. There's the gas getting started as well. So both these two seem to be playing, dare I say it fairly normally so nothing too crazy going on at the moment and that's okay crazy stuff doesn't need to matter and as this bracket currently stands um, Jadong is winning the, uh, the group at the moment he's currently got two wins no losses he hasn't dropped a single game because that is how boss he is Mon uh, Dana rather did 2-0 Munchie but then went 0-2 to Neo Angel so actually this game doesn't make a huge amount of difference um, to the rankings as far as I can tell. If, uh, if Dana wins this, then it actually, I think, guarantees a second spot. But yeah, basically, Monchi versus Neo Angel is probably going to be the decider, or at least most likely. So this is where things do get start getting really interesting. It's the game three from the group stage two. So that just means that after this, we will be going to a short break where I get to get some omnoms. And of course, my lovely production team hopefully have ordered me pizza if they're feeling lovely, but probably not. I'm probably just going to be a starving caster. I'll sit there and have my bread and water because that's what it's like. But anyway, I am only kidding. We do have, of course, Spine Cool is coming down here for Dana. JD, he's getting down his Baning Nest perfectly happy. Baning Nest now starting up for Dana too. These two just happily sitting here being like, you know what? Play it normal, play it safe. Let's see what we can get rolling. Both droning up quite nicely. Drone counts exactly equal. Supply count, one difference. Only minor, minor differences. And actually most of that is... Actually, I think the only thing was an additional Zergling is on the field. So it's not even a whole supply difference. It was half the supply difference. But clearly that cannot be shown on the overlays. Anyway, bailing this is done now for JD. For Dana, it's, well, nearly completed. Speed is going to be done for Jadong sooner as well. So he's going to be able to put on some nice pressure. 12 more links coming out as well. So could actually be going for a good little bit of a shove here. And with this big Zergling push, especially up against Dana going for the super fast lair, six minute lair, this could be devastating. The Overlord see this coming over. Now it's up to Dana to pump out a couple more links, but unfortunately doesn't have, doesn't now have a lot of lava. 11 lava are there, can start spending that. There is no supply block, but the minerals just aren't available. There comes, there they are coming down. Baning's morphing in. The Zergling's can just run straight in and start picking away a drone. So straight away we see that a lot of this is going to do a significant amount of damage and yeah Bailings do get a couple of good hits there. Dana has held off this aggression at the moment so this is good news for Dana and if the lair gets down then of course that quick tech up could be problems um, but it was no it's actually cancelled and so JD is ahead in terms of the lair timings and that is when 
you start running into issues because if Dana could have got that secured, then obviously Muralis could potentially have come out. Zerglings are running in though. Dana is going to try and get some good damage. Nice bailing heads coming down there though. Mineral walking those drones straight through the queens because that is just how it goes. And yeah, all in all, just sitting running around. JD going to be able to clean out most of this. A lot of lings down on the field. The drone count currently sitting at 38 to 36 in Dana's favor. So not a not a big difference, but in a mirror matchup, every worker really does count. And ZVZ, probably one of the biggest noticeable factors is that if you do drone quite heavily, you are going to get less units down. So JD is getting some drones out, but of course Dana are getting 12 more lings out on the field, trying to defend against this counter aggression that could be coming in. Banelings are not morphing yet for JD. Um, he's just getting his spy down, trying to fake a bit of pressure coming in. The Banelings, two Banelings there, got to be careful. The Lings are going to try and pick it off. Two Zerglings are going to get forced away, though. The Bane does still get sniped off. That's good for Dana right there. And Dana has to be careful. No Baning on two Zerglings. Not a good trade, but of course, JD, he's still keeping on the pressure. And all while he keeps on that pressure, things are going to be good for him. Spire's coming down on both sides, so the Spore Cooler change clearly not deterring these two players from going up to Muta on Muta battles. And of course, Muta on Muta is where fun things can start happening, because it all comes down to a couple of key factors. First and foremost, who has the most Muta lists? That's a pretty big deciding influence. Second, though, upgrades. Plus one, Fly Carapace will come down first because it reduces the Bouncing Glaive damage more than plus one attack increases it. And thirdly, and this is something that some um, lower level players may not realize, if you have units underneath, so you've got the ground superiority under the fight, your ground units will soak up some of the Glaive heads, reducing the splash damage. Those are the three big things in Muta or Muta that we've got to be keeping an eye out for. JD trying to take up his third, but Dana taking the third base as well. Very similar timings. This game is surprisingly close. Jadong has got a small advantage. Ooh, nice bailing hits there. Gotta be careful, Jadong. Can't just go running in. But yeah, Jadong does have the small advantage. And actually, wow. He switched from Carapace to getting us Flyer attack. Interesting decision there, especially when the Spire is down for Dana. A couple more bailing hits are going down. Um, Dana cleaning them out quite nicely, though. Only losing a couple of links there. Jadong has, I believe, seen that this hatch, uh, that the spire is down. Let me check. No, he hasn't seen the spire. That's the critical thing. He doesn't know it's there. So, so, or does he? No, Dana doesn't know. No, neither player knows the spire is down. But can assume um, because they haven't seen roaches. But plus one flyer carapace means that Dana's mutalist can engage so ridiculously better than Jadong's, and that's all down to the fact that the bouncing glaive decreases, it gets its damage decreased more than it is increased by armor rather than attack. So, this means any Muro or Muro battle will favor the My Insanity player. Will Jadong be able to overcome that though with ground superiority? Well, as things stand, the work count is in Jadong's favor, 54 to 45. He's got his third up and that fifth and sixth gas geyser. That's a critical thing because he's mining about a hundred more gas a minute. And on Muro and Muro fights, gas is the important thing to get that flock up a little bit larger. 13 Muro's up against nine though at the moment. Dana spent a lot more, six on the way out for Jadong. If Dana moves in now, when there aren't any queens, he's gonna be able to do a good bit of damage. He's also picking off overlords quite nicely. Um, while keeping a bit of overlord coverage on the map himself, being very aggressive for the moment. A couple of overlords getting sniped down here, and there's just no response from Jadong at the moment. Could lose another overlord if he's not careful, and that would have supply blocked him. So lucky to keep that one up with literally eight health points. If that had gone down, it would have been a supply block for the evil geniuses there, which wouldn't have been too pl fun. Plus missile attack, uh, plus fire attack, well, that is just about to complete. So in come the Mutalists now. They are going to go on the offensive. 18 to, uh, sorry, 16 to 19 in favor of Dana still, though. So that means that Dana probably can engage this, especially when his plus one carapace kicks in. He will have the small advantage in terms of the supply. That is something that, that's going to be really good. So... All in all, plus one flyer carapace getting research now from Jadong. He's getting out some more mutalists. The third base is up and running on both sides. Jadong a small up a small supply advantage, coming mainly from the fact that he's got 62 drones to 50. Better income. Gas income is identical, but here we go. The muta on muta fight is going down. Jadong winning this engagement at the moment, but the plus one carapace is really helping out in the later stages. Now the ground army has pretty much gone. Dana has also got Zerglings there. Who is winning in the mutalists count? Well, Jadong's is down to just eight. Reinforcements coming in here for Dana as well. Transfuse is trying to go down here for Jadong, but he's losing his Muta flock, 11 still up, and of course the critical mass of Muta lists starts really showing when you engage. 
Jadon not able to take that fight due to not having the plus one carapace and well the plus one flyer attack. Now so many overlords are gonna go down. Huge damage being done here by Dana and the my insanity player getting himself into a really good spot, going straight for the drone line now, knowing that there's not any spore callers here, knowing there's not any queens. However, Jadon counterattacking with some Zergings into the third base of Dana. A couple of queens getting taken out here from the mutalist. This game is just aggression everywhere, trying to get most of the damage done. But of course, 18. Mulis up against eight at the moment in Dana's favor. Dana just picking apart the drones, able to come and defend this. Jadong is not in a good position. He's down in supply, down in the work account, and GG's out. My insanity's Dana wins game one against evil geniuses. Jadong.